What up, players? It's Wallboss Tampa this month. Today we are going to finish our Blood Angels Assault Marine Sergeant. And the paints you're going to need are Mephiston Red, Corn Red, uh, Wazdaka Red, I think Evil Sun Scarlet, Celestra Gray, Ceramite White for the script, and Agrax Earthshade for the armor. We're also going to be using Mithril Silver, Sirius Purple for the purple, Bleached Bone, and Xandri Dust, and Skull White for the hair, Cadian Flesh Tone for the face, and I believe that is it. The Blood Angels look so great. What a great uh, looking chapter. Well, some things I did after at the end was I painted in the grill of his little mask. Bubble. Shh. Bubble's having breathing problems. I, he wants a respirator. And I also painted in the black Aquila on his breastplate with uh, Eshin Gray and then Dawnstone. Other than that, this is the completed model. Hope you guys liked it. Project First Founding, still going strong. Uh, up next, I'm going to be taking a break, I think, to paint a little bit of this guy for Project Pre-Heresy Space Wolf. So, looking forward to it, but hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you think. And I'm also going to be doing a tutorial on the shoulder insignia, which is why he doesn't have the Blood Angels insignia right now. But hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Latest play! Hey everybody, we're back, and we're going to continue, hopefully finish, painting our Blood Angels Sergeant. Assault Squad Sergeant. So, we've let the washes dry, and now we're going to continue by painting up the skin. We're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone, and we're just going to focus really on the eyebrows and the uh, cheeks. Cadian Flesh Tone, I've noticed, is um, as a layer color, it's, it's alright, but I've seen some painting guides in the White Dwarf that, and Bobo agrees with me, that use it as a base color, and I, I don't really agree with that, I don't think that's right. Okay, next we're gonna take some Xandri dust, and we are going to layer up the hair with this. Look, Bobo, he's got a jump pack. He can fly just like you. And you can kind of see this mold line like right down the center of his head there. <laughs> it's okay, we'll paint over that in just a little, just a little while. All right, now we're gonna go back to the armor and we're gonna come back to it with I can find where I put it, Mephiston Red. Appropriately named, wouldn't you say, Bobo? So we're going to try and keep it from clumping uh, But, yeah, you never know I found that the best way to keep your paint from clumping even when using a wet palette is to feather the paint That means when, as soon as you brush it on go to the very edges where it meets the um, meets the color that was previously there and just kind of feather feather the the edges of it to kind of blend the 
brush strokes into the piece of the model right beneath it. Such a beautiful armor piece. This, uh, their shoulder pads, I mean, for the Sanguinary Guard. Really, really nice. Now when you're painting flat areas like this area on the jump pack, sorry, let me adjust the focus a little bit, you're going to need to really take care of how thin down your paints are as well as how, how much of a um, color differentiation you want between the, the shaded color and the topmost color. So. If, if this is too bright, you could just go back over it with corn red and you can still see some of the some of the color from the shade, but I kind of like this brighter uh, Mephiston red color for the jump pack. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it. I was doing my research on Lexicanum and Wikipedia, uh, the Warhammer 40k wiki and I just find it so interesting how the Blood Angels are like the loyalist version of the Emperor's children. That they are the ones that want to really perfect their warfare and um, strive for perfection and have a really high value in the aesthetics of their, their war gear and their armor and the way that they fight and how they, like so much, so much uh, references in the, the, the fluff and the lore kind of paint them as these very noble space marines. Look at this terrible join right there. I'm gonna let that go for now because I don't have any liquid green stuff on me, but you know, usually if you have a really bad join like this, you want to kind of fix it up green stuff over it, uh, epoxy putty it, take your knife and just file away the edges. But, you can't do that right now. Because, Bobo, do you know why? Cause ain't nobody got time for that, Bobo. Yeah, so you can see how just one application of the base color or the, the highlighter, the most highlighted base color over a washed portion of the model really kicks up the color again. If you don't have Cowbird Crimson, you can also use Agrax Earthshade. And like I said, it really depends on how bright you want to go with your highlight color. But I think taking it back up at least to the base, in this case, with fist on red, is a really good idea.
with this, I'm going to focus mostly on the side because when you're holding the model, that's kind of where the, the light is going to go. I'm not going to highlight too much to the center here in the front. I'm just going to kind of just blend it towards the center to leave some shadow of the shade. So it's like creating an optical illusion where the side here is brighter than the front. Maybe a little bit more in the front, but it's kind of, you get the gist. I'm at that phase in my, my painting career where I'm looking for really cheap, or not cheap, but clever, intelligent ways of drawing the viewer's eye to certain parts of the model. So that when they pick it up and hold it, then I think that's the best. I've, I've said it so many times, but when you're playing a game and your opponent or some random guy comes up to you to the table and kind of puts the game either on hold or kind of just stands there while you're playing just so that you can look at your models. I think that's the coolest feeling in the whole world. I know, I'm sorry, Bobo. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit more highlighting with this color. Alright, so that's our marine highlighted back up with Mephiston Red. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to take some Chaos Black and do a horizontal stripe where his eye is. Can't really see the left eye, so I'm not going to worry about that one too much for right now, but I'm going to take your black paint and just do a horizontal line right where the eyeball is going to go. Just repainting the rebreather here. See, the problem with Cadian Flesh Tone is that it's a kind of a thick pigment so that if you paint it right over a skin-based color like Bugman's Glow, then it'll tend to dry in the recesses and clump them up really, really badly, unfortunately. Okay, now we're going to take some uh, let's find it. Gehenna's Gold. Or the old shiny gold, Let's see which one I can find first. Here we go, and we're gonna paint up, highlight the gold pieces. Oh. Sometimes I let my Gehenna's gold just like sit, and then it, if you can see, it separates, so the pigment all goes to the bottom, and the, <clears throat> or the, the, the metal pigment goes to the bottom, and the red goes to the top. Hate that. Hate it. So you gotta shake it up in order to get this. Um, gold color. Okay, so any gold areas like the this part with the axe we're gonna paint in right now. Bless you. Bobo said bless you. Bobo squarked. He said bless you. Yep. Okay, next. Now we're gonna edge highlight. So what this means is we're gonna take a paint that's a step higher than what we were using. So Mephiston Red. And we're going to Use that to edge highlight the armor. So you can either do Evil Sun Scarlet or 
You can also do Waz Daka Red. And um, let's go with Waz Daka Red for now because that's a richer, more red color. It's kind of closer to Mephiston Red. Uh, but as a layer paint, it's not going to cover as well So, uh, as a base paint. So what I found kind of looks like watermelon. Oh, don't you just want to eat that? Mmm, candy. What I found is that layer paints are really just good for highlighting or or edge highlighting over at least one base coat. So we're going to start with the shoulder pad here. Ooh, candy. So all you're going to be doing is following the lines of your figure. I kind of painted it into that side just to see how it would how it would look. Now that I know, I take my fist on red and paint it back across the front. So now I've got my Wazdaka red again. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're going into the War Boss Tay standard, so I think at any point now, if you want, you can stop. But if I were painting an army of these guys, I would want to do it to the best of my abilities. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm also going to try to draw the viewer's eye to the side of his leg by painting in a faint line highlight down the center. Not the center of the leg, but the center of the, the highlight area where I feel the light would be strongest. Oh, 
you know what we need to do? We need to paint the half of this power axe. So we're gonna use Cowbird Crimson again and Mer. If I can find it, here we go. Cowbird Crimson. And we're gonna paint right down the side. Hi guys, looking really good. So now we're gonna take Evil Sun Scarlet. Oh, is it Evil Sun Scarlet? <gasps> what was I looking at? Was Dr. Red or Evil Sun Scarlet? Let's go with this, Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a little bit more orange and yeah, now we'll paint the final highlight. So this one is really just gonna go at the very edges of what the light would catch. So like the corners, down any of the really hard lines like the jump pack front. The trick is you want to see all of the colors. So you want to see the Evil Sun Scarlet, you want to see the Wazdaka Red, you want to see the uh, the fist on red and you want to see the shade. In order to do that you have to just be very uh, precise and careful with where you put your highest highlight. Sometimes what I like to do is line just at the edges. You'll see this in my Dark Eldar videos where I kind of just do the edges like that rather than paint the whole edge. And that really draws the, the, the viewer's eye. My tip's starting to fray. So you do this with the whole model, just like I did with the uh, the Moot Green and the Dark Angel Space Marine, or uh, any Space Marine model. You take the highest highlight, what would be considered just, you know, not right if you had the whole marine in this color, and you just do the, the edges. Show you what I mean with the shoulder here. We take the color and we just ever so lightly kiss the edges of each of these little little pieces. So from far away, you can really tell the difference. That's not bad, huh, Bobo? Alright, that's that. Uh, next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna take we're gonna take our Xandri dust. If I can find it, where did I put it? Where did I put my Xandri dust, Bobo? Uh, that's XP88. Oh they all look the same. 
Don't laugh at me, Bobo. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. Here you are, master. Ah, thank you, Igor. So we're gonna take our Zandri dust, and if you have the new Ushati bone or Screaming Skull, you can mix that in, but if not, we're gonna go with the uh, old bleached bone. So what this is that we're trying to get a nice looking highlight. So just do like one to one or even amounts Zandri dust and bleached bone. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from like the tips of the hair and we're gonna paint strokes that go back towards the center of his head. Doing this, we just covered up our mold line. Hey, we're gonna add a little bit more bleached bone so that the mix is now maybe say like two to one, two parts bleached bone, one part sandry dust, and now we are really going to just stick to the edges. Ah. Oh, I messed up. Then we'll do like just where the light would reflect off the top of the head. Instead of the whole crown. Finally, we add a little bit more bleached bone and we add some skull white. Skull white or ceramic white if you have the new ceramic white. Basically we're going for a lighter than bleached bone, very pale, almost white color. And this one is going to frost just the tips of the hair and just go around. Getting like the tips. Welcome, by the way, everyone, to my how to paint, paint blonde hair with the new colors tutorial. Now, the secret is, which I learned a long time ago, <clears throat> not to paint the hair yellow or white, like if we went to golden yellow, it would just look like somebody cracked an egg on his head, right? That's not what we want. So the way we're gonna finish it off by adding a little bit of that David Spade brown at the roots realism is we are going to now take Seraphim Sepia. Shh, this is my secret. This is so that our guy looks like a realistically blonde colored, uh, has realistically blonde hair and not like, you know, something all messed up. It's just really there to tie all the bright highlights down together, so you don't want it to to pool and to be, you don't want to turn his head the sep uh, sepia color. It's just there to add a little bit of shade to the blonde. Maybe it's Maybelline. All right, and that is gonna do it. If you want, and 
uh, this is purely up to you, but you can take your Screamer Pink, and now that the shade is dried, highlight only in a line the little parts of his axe haft that would reflect light or pick up light the most, so like right here. This way you get a nice purple highlight while keeping the shaded darker areas in the recesses. I think that's all we have to do. I'm gonna take my uh, Zandri, no, my bleached bone, or if you're using Ushapti, Ushapti bone or Screaming Skull, and now we're going to just highlight up the parchment scroll. find some there we go some serious it's a serious bro this is some serious purple <laughs> we're gonna highlight up the wax of the purity seal again if you're painting space marine uh, space marines usually the parchment seals are gonna be red but in this case because this guy's entire suit of armor is red we need a contrasting color that's going to pop out. I've seen some people do green, green wax. I don't really care for it. I feel purple is the best. If you want, you can even add some, some bleached bone to your purple. Let me just show you what that looks like if you do that. You use this as like the edge highlight where it catches the light the most. Gives almost a nice dried wax look. It's still purple, but it draws the eye a little bit more. Like the wax is dried, sticking, sticking the parchment onto the armor. Pretty cool, huh? A war boss tape, hot tip for you there. Um, anything else we can do, Bobo? I'm gonna take some mithril silver and paint the little uh, pieces of his power axe there. And I've heard that power axes are really good in this edition. So hopefully this power axe will bring our guy much victory, much glory on the battlefield. You're also going to use the mitral silver to highlight up the edge edges of his bolt pistol. The edges of his harness here. We're gonna use it as a dry brush for the vents on his jump pack. We are in the home stretch, Bobo. Micron Arts pen now in black. And we're gonna give this guy some prayers to keep him safe on the battlefield. And doing script on your models. I always try to go for as many lines as possible 
rather than just, uh, you know, four or five lines, because that way from farther away it'll look like more legit. So if you go on like the angle and you're able to get more, fit more lines onto it, then it's, uh, I always find it better. Okay, one last thing you can do. The more venerable your guy is, the more likely he is to have some script on him. So you can take some Celestra Gray and this is totally optional if you, if you really want to do it. Thin it down on your wet palette so that it's on your brush, just at the very tip of your brush and it's not watery but ready to, ready to write with. And give your guy some script, either on his, like on his jump pack or anywhere on his body. It's up to you. So, where we're going to write this guy's script on is, let's say his jump pack. Now writing with a paintbrush instead of your Micron Arts Pen is a little bit different because uh, the Micron Arts Pen is, the tip is so fine. That's what she said. Lewis, ah, get out of here. That you're going to have to really pay attention to the tip of your brush. Oh, Lewis, I can't believe you said that. Now, just like real script, you want there to be some differentiation. Right? You don't want it to just be one straight line going across with a couple squiggles in it. So, that is how I do it. Now, the reason we went with Celestra Gray is because now we're going to use Ceramite White to cap it off. but we're only going to use it very, very sparingly to reinforce the script. We don't want it to completely stick out like a mistake. So like a highlight, you want to only paint it in the areas of the script that you can see the Celestra Gray underneath, underneath it. So I'm just kind of poking and dabbing rather than really scribbling and writing. But as you can see, when it comes out, it looks, it looks like script. Okay, you can do this on the knees or the, the, the leg armor. You can do it on the shoulder pad. In fact, let's do, let's do a little bit more on the front of this guy's shoulder pad just to show how, how awesome he is. Again, we're starting with Celestra Gray. We're only going to do two lines. And then we're going to finish off with our Ceramite White within the lines. Maybe I'll do a, this is so late in this tutorial, maybe I'll do a how to write script tutorial. Because most chapters use this on their armor. Black Templars especially, some of the more uh, fervent, pious chapters. So if you make a mistake, you just go back over with your base color, or the color of the last highlight, in this case, Mephisto on red. I'm gonna start from the center here, working my way out, and see if we can cover this little mistake here at the end. Surgery finished. 
The very last step you might want to do, or you might not, is to take some Agrax, Agrax Earthshade and use it to what we call line in the creases. Second, let me put Bobo up on his perch. Excuse me, Bobo, excuse me, excuse me. All right, sorry about that. So we're gonna take some Agrax Earthshade and the uh, most obvious places are all of the creases that you can find. And where any of the metal or any of the materials meet each other. That's where like the natural shadows are the most prevalent. So any of the creases in armor, let me show you specifically where's the best place. Right here where the shoulder pad meets itself. Just take your Agrax Earthshade, paint it in there. Then if you want, you can fudge. I'm just gonna paint across the whole thing with it. So you see how it leaves a very nice, nicely shaded red. You can keep that, repeat it anywhere you want on the model. Kind of like where it is, so I'm gonna leave it there. Mmm, we missed this gem. Okay, let's quickly do this gem. Let's do it, Bobo. Starting with black. You always want to start your gems with black. I remember listening to a 40k radio and uh, even some other people mentioned it. There's just so much iconography and stuff on Blood Angel models. They're just everywhere, you know? So while we're waiting for that to dry, uh, you know what, I'm actually gonna let that dry and go away for a second and come back to it. So uh, we'll finish, but the paints you're gonna need is we're gonna make this blue, a blue gemstone. So we're gonna use Sotek Green, Temple Guard Blue, and Ceramite White. So the first thing we're gonna do is I think it should be dry. Cross your fingers, Bobo. <laughs> We're gonna paint the Sotek green on the bottom and upper right side of the gem. Yeah, nice. Now we're gonna take our Temple Guard blue, do the same thing, but in a smaller surface area. So just at the bottom right corner. You see it's kind of blending in the two colors there. Last thing is we're taking our Ceramite White. And we're just gonna do a fine little, little curve right at the bottom. Oops. All right, I made a mistake, so I'm just gonna go back over with Corn Red, which is the deepest color of the armor. and. Fix that right up. Ta-da! Real time, ladies and gentlemen, real time. Last thing for that gem is give it a little gloss varnish finish. Art coat, I think, is the new gloss varnish. Now when you're sealing your models, this step can be skipped uh, if you want, or you can just seal it depending on whether you want your model shiny or or uh, matte, which means non-shiny. So when I seal my models, I usually gloss varnish it, spray it with gloss varnish, and then go back over with a thing called dull coat. And what that does is it takes down the shine. But if you want a gem to be nice and shiny like this, then you just go back over with your art coat then. So that step, the gloss varnish paint could actually 
wait till the very end. And there you have it, players. I'm gonna finish up the base and then um, I'm just gonna film the introduction, but this is it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching my How to Paint a Blood Angels Space Marine. Latest, players.